Hi, I'm John. I'm from Aero Fluid Power Tech Support. And today we're going to be going over the Aero, Aero Flow line of filter regulator lubricators. I want to talk how to set them up, how to use them, and the different configurations you can get this product. I'd like to talk about the setup of each of these units in terms of an FRL. And that pretty much describes the sequence in which they should be mounted. First is the filter, then the regulator, and finally the lubricator. So that would be the order. You wouldn't want to put the lubricator in front of any of the other units because then it would be distributing oil to these and really compromising their function. So the lubricator always goes at the end of the line. Going over the different configurations, you can get these products as individual units. Here we have an individual loop piggyback filter regulator and a lubricator. The majority of our product will come with modular spacers. These are T-type brackets. You can also have them configured with pipe nipples. And this is something that you would do. You'd buy the individual units and then have them held together with a pipe nipple between the two. Going over the different product lines for the Aeroflow, we have the 1000 series, the 1500 series. These are from the 2000 series, and this is the 3000 series. And as you can imagine, they're differentiated by the port size and the amount of flow from each unit. As you said, you can purchase these in individual units, and in that case, you could hold them together with a pipe nipple, or you could purchase a modular clamp. In this case, we have a T-bracket that has the seal point on one side, a seal point on the other, and that seal point will match to the facing of each individual unit. Putting those together requires a little dexterity. It's not too bad. Put one unit in place. And you can see how it will fit inside the T-bracket. The second unit will then also slide into place and it will be held together. Okay, I've put the piggyback and the lubricator into the T-bracket and you can see where the seal points are here. Now lining this up can take a couple minutes and it may fall apart on you, but what I'd like to do is get it into this place Hold it together with my hand, as you can see it's sealing everything here, and then push down on the face bracket. Holding it in place, I can then take my Allen wrench and start the screw. And once it's started, then it's easy just to complete it as such. And now I've got an airtight seal between my piggyback filter regulator and my lubricator with the T-bracket. I'd like to talk about the differences in the types of bowls available. This is a polycarbonate bowl with a guard. It's an economical bowl. It's the majority of what we sell and it's good for a lot of applications. The, bowl, the polycarbonate bowl with a guard will have a maximum air inlet to the unit of 150 psi. If you have an application where there may be uh, aerosol or chemicals in the atmosphere that could attack the polycarbonate, you can go, for instance, to this, which is a metal bowl with a sight glass. The sight glass will allow you to see how much lubrication is still in the oiler or how much water is collected in the filter. This permits a maximum air inlet of 250 psi. It also is better in applications where, again, there's going to be an aerosol or something in the atmosphere that could attack the polycarbonate and it's also more durable than the polycarbonate. This unit has a manual drain which will be similar to the Schrader valve in the tire of your car. Under pressure you'll push the valve to the side which will expel the water and debris from the filter. This unit has an auto drain and as the water accumulates within the bowl at a certain point it will lift the filter element, the drain, and permit the water and debris to be expelled from the filter. And as you can see it has a threaded drain port so I could actually put an adapter to this and run 
the water away from the application instead of just allowing it to spray onto the shop floor. Airline adjustment of the downstream air pressure is pretty easy on either a piggyback filter regulator or a standard regulator. First you have to pull up on the adjustment knob and then turning it clockwise will increase the air pressure. Turning it counterclockwise will relieve the air pressure on a relieving regulator. For the lubricator, I want to talk about how to adjust the amount of lubricant delivered as well as filling the unit. And that's done at the top of the lubricator. You see we have the clear sight dome. This proves two, has two functions. Number one is I can use a screwdriver and either turning it clockwise decrease the amount of lubricant dispensed or turning it counterclockwise increase the amount of lubricant being put into the system. And the way I'll know that is as a downstream device like a tool is being used I'll actually see the oil come up into the top of the sight dome and then drop into the air supply, it'll be atomized and distributed downstream. When the lubricator is empty and needs to be refilled, the way we do that is again through the top of the unit. And it can be done under pressure. You don't have to depressurize the system. It's simply you remove the fill screw you're able to put more lubricant into the bowl and then put this back in place and tighten it and you filled the bowl. You don't have to empty the system and remove the bowl to fill it. It can be done through the top of the unit while the system is still pressurized. Another aspect of the lubricator in terms of the sight dome, we do offer a kit for a replacement sight dome in case it gets damaged or uh, is broken you can replace the entire unit using the sight dome kit. If you have any of these and have questions, you can call tech support at 800-495-0276. Thanks.